I've just been down in the shops and everyone's asking me, did you watch the debate? Who won the debate? Who was the best? Who was the worst? So here goes. Now, the head to head debate is very different to giving a speech. And last night's performance reminded me of going head to head with Nick Clegg a couple of times in 2014. However much you plan, however prepared you are for these debates, in the end, it's about who gets the upper hand. And sometimes in debate, that comes through ways you might not think. You might think to get out there, all guns blazing is the way to go. To be on the front of your feet, actually really successful head-to-head -head debate means spending more time on your heels, waiting for the other person to say something and then reacting. Rishi Sunak, we know, is behind in the polls with party members, not in the country, but behind in polls with party members. He knows he's got to make a big impact and make it really, really quickly because the ballot papers will start going out next week. I would think, to be honest, by August the 18th, 19th, this will pretty much be over. I thought Sunak just tried too hard, interrupted too often, and at times looked just a little bit unpleasant, possibly, trying too hard. As the debate went on, he did actually get back in to a reasonable position and a better pace. Truss, well, she's not known for being a great public performer. She's not known for being a great debater, but she did hold her own. Of that, there is no question. And of course, tax dominated absolutely everything. Is this the moment to keep taxes high? Is this the moment to cut them? At times, listening to the economic debate, it was difficult to work out whether both were actually in the same party. But it was a question that wasn't discussed. It was the gigantic, screaming, roaring elephant in the room that I couldn't quite get my head round. Now, I know that our taxpayer-funded state broadcaster, the BBC, are totally metropolitan, totally North London in their, out, in their outlook, uh, particularly in terms of their researchers and those in their offices. And whilst Chris Mason, who comes from outside of that, I think made quite a good start as the BBC's new political editor and the questions that he asked were actually very, very good. But it's the questions he didn't ask. It's the questions that weren't raised at all. Nowhere, and I mean nowhere in that debate, did we discuss the level of legal immigration heading to record highs, let alone illegal immigration across the English Channel. Just wasn't even raised, wasn't even discussed. Uh, that is a huge failing on the part of the BBC. Not that I think either would have had any answers. I don't think London understands. I don't think London gets the level of anger over this issue. Brexit was about getting back control of our borders. And those dinghies coming across the channel every day say that we failed completely and utterly in it. Funny, isn't it? You can cross in a dinghy from France illegally, but try and drive your car onto Eurotunnel and it might take you hours because there aren't enough French customs officers. I've been going around the Red Wall over the course of the last few months. I've spoken, met hundreds, perhaps even thousands of people. And I keep being told, look, you know, our son is on the waiting list for social housing. It'll be at least a year. And yet the hotel down the road has just filled up with young men who've crossed the English Channel. Young men, incidentally, who we learned just the other day, in many cases, aren't even being documented and then are absconding into our community. We should be declaring an emergency. But the BBC didn't think to discuss it, and it probably suited Liz Truss and Rishi Sunak not to debate it. I hope in future debates this question does come up, although neither of them have got the courage to confront the fact that all the while we're in ECHR, it ain't going to happen. Well, back to what was discussed. As I said earlier, Sunak tried too hard, but then slipped into gear. The outcome of that debate, I think, is pretty clear. Liz Truss didn't get hurt by it. If it was, at the end of the day, a score draw, then that for Truss actually is a win. A couple more of these head-to-heads to go before the ballot papers go out. Unless trust does something ridiculous and stupid, I can't quite see that happening, then I think we can say pretty much for sure she is going to be 
our next prime minister, whether she really has any of the answers, whether she's actually able to reach out to ordinary folk and make them think she can better their lives, apart from just short term cuts in tax remains to be seen. I think really what we saw last night was a, it was a debate. Yes, it was a proper debate, but it was a bad tempered exchange uh, between two people who've been serving in Boris Johnson's cabinet. Trust more seen to be continuity Boris perhaps than Rishi. What we're really seeing, I think, is a Conservative Party in much deeper trouble than any of them even understand.